I'm Jake Bruton and welcome to What Should I Use? Today we're going to talk about WRB. Let's do it now. What Should I Use? A Build Original Series hosted by me, Jake Bruton. This episode is sponsored by Prosico. Okay, when we talk about WRB, we're going to have the conversation about first, what does WRB mean? The code says one thing, if we talk about industry publications, or if we listen to public speakers in the industry, they might say another thing. So let's define that and then we'll get into it. The WRB conversation starts with water resistant barrier if we look at the code, but if we listen to other people, it's weather resistant barrier. So which one of those do we go by? How do we determine which one of those we're gonna do? So let's start as we do in any instance with what should I use? We're gonna follow our regular fashion. We're gonna talk about what does the 2021 IRC say. We're gonna talk about what available industry councils say. And while there isn't really an industry council of any sort, we just kind of have to breeze past that and straight into like chapter three or part three of our series, which is my perspective, my take, my experience, or my failures, my successes, and how that guides my thinking on the topic. And so let's start with IRC 2021. And the reason that when I say WRB in this context, we're gonna first explore water resistive barrier. So the IRC only mentions the WRB in a couple small places, and they use the term water. This is an important distinction because if we're going to talk about this from a, what is the goal, what is this item doing, what are we focused on? If we're focusing on what the code says, and it says water, then we're pushing all of the other control layers aside. Which is not necessarily a bad thing because when we look at what kills buildings, we're talking about water as the number one killer, right? The code focuses on health and safety and then energy efficiency, well, Water is the number one killer of buildings after we keep them from burning and falling down. The code, when we look at R703 1.1, says water resistant. The exterior wall envelope shall be designed and constructed in a manner that prevents the accumulation of water within the wall assembly and providing a water resistant barrier. So there we are, water resistant, not weather resistant behind the exterior cladding as required, and then it goes on to mention other sections, and we're gonna manage that water that penetrates the exterior cladding. So that section of the code is only talking about we have to resist water. That's a challenge when we start talking about WRB because if we're gonna focus on anything other than water, the IRC is only telling us in this section that we're focused on water. So let's continue about what the IRC says. The IRC says, if you go to 703, it starts to outline, as the IRC does in only a few sections of the code, actual materials that we're gonna discuss for, these are the things that we should do. And the reason I say like actual materials, one of the things that we need to know about the code is the code is kind of a recipe book that is for inspiration. So the code is a recipe book. If you're gonna bake, you have to use flour, you have to use sugar, you have to use butter and you have to use them in the amounts that the, the recipe calls for if you want it to turn out. However, if you are going to make mashed potatoes, you might be able to push and pull and use things in different proportions and they still taste good. Well, the code is mashed potatoes rather than baking. So we have inspiration and we can push and pull and we can use things in our idea and our inspiration and the code just says within these parameters. So. It's a recipe, but it is a recipe for your style of building, your methods, and what's available in your market, and you can pick and choose what works for you. And so for the code to actually recognize one specific building material, this doesn't happen in very many places in the code unless it's specific to like structure. Well, when we start talking about WRB, we generally already have our structural panel on the wall, we're talking about something that's gonna be water resistive or weather resistive. So how is the code gonna actually talk about a specific material? Well, they do it in a really interesting way. They mention one material and one material only, and that's number 15 pound felt. That's it. Now, there are other sections in this section that actually talk about 
the kinds of materials that you can use, but felt is the only one named in this section of the code. And the reason is that material is like the godfather, the, the OG, the original of RWRB. When we used to build with clabbers instead of big sheets of ply, we had all those gaps and we were starting to put that on the wall to shed water to behind our clabbered siding. It was there, it was our windbreak, not just water, but it was there and it's the thing that is the carryover from the past. Everything since then is manufacturer driven instead of being historical. And everything that's mentioned after that in the code is an ANSI standard or an ASTM standard. And they're all just, hey, if the manufacturer makes something that's within these parameters, you can use it, which is kind of the great part about the code. And this is the recipe part of the code. Hey, we have all these different ideas. We have all these different assembly things that you can do. You pick, you choose, as long as it fits these standards. And I might note that this R703.2 ends with and other approved. That means your building official, they say it's okay. Manufacturers Association says it's okay. You make an argument or your engineer approves it, you're good to go. That's how simple the WRB section is in this section of the code. It's a use felt or one of these things that passes some sort of test or something your engineer says is okay. That is like a wide open, let's just make our own choice but it's still very scientific in the approach of the ASTM standards are written, everything's in the code for you to, to decipher, and your engineer is gonna have their standard. Part two of what should I use is always, what is the industry standard or what is that industry council? Unlike our, say, Windows episode, there isn't an NFRC version of WRBs. There isn't a, an industry council that's just focused on weather resistant barrier or water resistant barrier. So who do we look to in this instance? Unfortunately, there's not really a manufacturer's association that has some overwhelming voice that guides us through a decision-making process on this. So we actually get to skip this section in this series and we get to go straight to, let's talk about what the different choices are here and then let's talk about what my guiding principles are when I start talking about what I'm going to choose. So when we get to this decision-making process of what are we gonna use, what's out there, what material selection we have, now we really have to dive deep into the, are we WRB water resistant barrier? Are we WRB weather resistant barrier? And I know it sounds like I'm making a big deal out of this, but it is super important. We're talking about our first line of defense or our last line of defense, depending on how you want to look at it. I'm going to say, if water gets to this, we have an issue and that issue has to be dealt with here. And I'm also going to say that most likely this is going to be for an air control layer for me as well in most of my buildings. So I'm going to say this is a weather resistant barrier on the majority of our buildings. So this is at least two control layers in our envelope and potentially three control layers because there's a vapor implication here as well. So all of a sudden, water resistant barrier is part of the equation, but kind of out of the equation here. And we're on to three control layers. So this is a weather resistant barrier for the rest of our conversation here. Okay, so let's talk the three different types of WRB in this conversation. Let's start with mechanically fastened. And when I say mechanically fastened, I am really just talking about house wrap, something that comes to the site on a roll. This is the thing that I used at the beginning of my career. It is going to get strung out across the building and then generally we're gonna punch a ton of holes in it, which is probably not the best thing in most cases for then trying to be air and water tight. This is the least likely to actually provide an air control layer although a lot of the manufacturers of the mechanically fastened systems do actually have installation methods that they will tell you are for an air control layer. I think that you have a lesser opportunity for success in most cases with these systems. I'm not saying they're completely unsuccessful. I'm just saying that the opportunity for success in my opinion is probably less. When it comes to things like a rough opening or turning into an opening, they are a little more challenging from an origami standpoint. You're using heavy tapes to turn corners or to make up penetrations and things like that. 
it can be a more challenging system. Or on a fully adhered system like this from Prosoco, we have a full family of products where we're talking about being able to bridge gaps with something that has a little bit more body like their joint and seam or turn into the openings or go around penetrations like their fast flash or just roll around the body of the sheathing and cover large areas like their Cat 5. The roll on or spray on like we have here, we end up getting something that is completely monolithic. In this case, we have a seam treatment and then we have detailing liquid and a body product that we end up being from top to bottom, from side to side, we end up being monolithic in, in purpose and completely unbroken. This is going to be your, your Cadillac, your Mercedes. This is the top of the line. This is the simplest for making those turns that I talked about that can be challenging with other products. Everything is fluid, so we have the ability to tuck around penetrations, we have the ability to tuck into openings, we have the ability to make connections very simply, very quickly, and very cleanly for that matter. Lastly, I would say is our factory applied. And I think of factory applied as kind of some version of fluid applied, but onto a panel at the, the factory. The challenge with that is we're getting that generally in a four foot by eight foot, four foot by nine foot panel. And now we have to make connections between those panels. So those things have to connect to each other and we're relying on parts and pieces to make those connections. That might be a adhesive tape, it might be a liquid. The same sorts of systems are available for openings, so there are pluses and minuses there. The benefit there is that they go up in large sheets and sometimes we get our structural panel attached with those. So it's just a push-pull in that instance. And most of these things are driven by budget or construction timeline or availability. I, in my preference for those three categories, we kind of have that monolithic is like our Cadillac. It's our, it's our starting point. If we can find a way to push that into the budget, that's, the, that's our first point. Anytime we have continuity in a control layer, that is like what we preach about nonstop. Unbroken is the best thing when we're looking for air control and water control and water management. That's our starting point. So we're looking for monolithic, side to side, top to bottom, making all those connections to our windows, to our doors, to our penetrations. That ability to connect parts to pieces, control layers to control layers, continuity is key. Next, when we're selecting a WRB, we're moving on to availability. If I run out of it, I don't mean initial availability as much as I mean still available when we dump a bucket over in someone's yard or when a bucket gets opened or a material gets opened or a box gets opened and we realize that something isn't what we thought it was. Is there more available in the community in which we're working? Durability is next. Most materials that are on the market stay on the market because they do work. We're looking for something that is super durable. So we're not just looking for something that can work, we're looking for something that's gonna work in the environment that we're putting it in. So we're not building houses that are the get by house. We're looking for something that we're gonna put our stamp on, that I'm gonna drive my kids by and I'm gonna be proud of and I'm gonna be very happy to give someone a warranty on, which means durability is a good thing and it's gonna be very easy for me to put my my stamp of approval on because I'm not gonna go broke giving someone a warranty on it. Next is installability. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but we're gonna call it a word for today. Is it easy to install? Is it possible to install? Can my carpenters who are used to working with wood or my painters who are used to working with fluid, are, are normal craftspeople capable of installing that product in a way that is going to give it its opportunity for success? There are items that are marketed for any aspect, not just WRB, that you see in stores or online that you look at and you immediately go, am I gonna have to hire someone with a PhD to install this thing? And is this actually going to work in the end? And that is a really challenging aspect to this. And I think that there are some products, I mean, even this one, I've installed plenty of Prosco and I've not had any issues with it and our team members have that like there's some simplicity in very easy to understand systems 
that give you a good opportunity for success. I'm also gonna just come right out and say the air barrier aspect of a WRV. Like I said, we're scratching water resistant barrier and we're going to weather resistant barrier. I'm asking for as many things in one pass around the building as I possibly can. There's no reason for me to just focus on water. When I'm putting up big sheets or I'm covering big surface areas, I should be getting an air control layer out of that as well. I'm already shooting for continuity. I'm already shooting for a control layer. Why not double up? Perm ratings. I'm paying attention. I'm also offering drying potential in another direction, but I'm just being aware of what's happening. And lastly, a systems approach. I want things to play well with other things. I like the idea that I can buy one product or a group of products from one manufacturer and everything work well together. And it not be that, oh, this company makes this thing, but I have to buy this thing from another manufacturer just to be able to create my envelope. I want my life and my company to be simplified. And anytime that I can get a family of products that resolve more than one issue for me, as in air control and water control, that makes our project and our job site potentially simpler. It makes our process potentially simpler. And there are plenty of ways that we can find on our own to make things a heck of a lot more complicated. And anytime that it can be simpler, that is right up my alley. So in summation, the IRC doesn't really take a stance on this outside of we have testing parameters or you can use felt. The industry council thing doesn't really exist in this aspect. And from my standpoint, we're looking for things that are easy to come by. They're easy to use. They lend themselves to the shape of our building, to the challenges that our building faces. They're gonna get rained on. They're gonna be challenged by the elements. They're gonna have to resist airflow and they're gonna have to be durable and we're gonna have to stand behind their construction. And we're looking for products that are gonna help with that. And we're looking for products that are gonna be a systems approach to building that are gonna simplify the entire process for us. Outside of that, think of it as more than one thing anytime you possibly can, and that will make it a little bit easier. Till next time, thanks for watching What Should I Use? I'm Jake Bruton, have a good day.